Have we ever actually gotten through one of these tutorials in under two minutes? Probably not, but we'll go ahead and try again anyway. Hey guys, what's going on? Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you so much for joining us for another Two Minute Tuesday video. It is so good to see all of your smiling faces once again. And today we are going to be talking about the classic Warhawk theme. Now, if I were to make a bet, I would probably say that these have to be up there within that top 10, top 20 most popular custom sneaker themes of all time. And there has been a ton of great variations from a lot of different artists using this theme over the years. The first person that always comes to my mind has to be my buddy Sab One out in Boston, who has done this theme on countless models and absolutely kills it every single time. This is one of those really versatile themes that I think can work great on a lot of different shoes, but ultimately I think that sort of how you might plan out the shark teeth, how big they're gonna be amongst the rest of the theme is really gonna vary from silhouette to silhouette. So rather than spending too much time focusing on the shark teeth today, and because that's something that we've covered in the past in some of our Babe Camo Vans videos, in which I'll throw a card on the screen if you're interested in checking them out, I thought that we would be much better off talking about how we can bring the rest of this theme together. And more specifically, how we can go from something like this with a blank gray background into something like this with a weathered steel panel look. So without further ado, let's go ahead and throw two minutes on that clock and dive right in. For today's project, I'm gonna be using a pair of Adidas shell toes in which I've already laid down my light gray base. And the first thing that I like to do after our background's laid down is just inject a little bit more color into these. So I'm gonna take a pale blue paint and we're gonna be spraying this throughout the rest of the upper just in some nice large circular spurts. Although most of this is gonna get covered up through our weathering effect, this step can really give your piece some added depth down the line. Our next step, which is really gonna start aging these in giving them some of that rusted effect is we need to take a little bit of brownish orange paint and what we're essentially going to start doing is applying some dagger strokes in a vertical downwards fashion. Now if you're not too familiar with the dagger stroke this is a very common airbrushing technique in which you're going from a much wider stroke to a very thin point. So at the widest part of this stroke you want to have your airbrush back away from the surface and as you're traveling downwards move your airbrush closer while reducing the amount of paint you're applying. Anytime I'm doing a technique like this rusted effect, it's very important to remember that it's gonna be much easier to add paint and add to this effect rather than trying to take away and remove paint from this effect. After my dagger strokes are complete, something that can really help sell this effect on a pair of shoes is doing this around some of the lace holes also. And here's what my upper looks like now after adding a little bit of pale blue along with some of that rusting effect. Now moving on to our steel paneling effect, something that I want you to take notice of is some of those distinct lines that exist within the shoe because of the various panels, or they could be because of some of the curves and contours within the shoe. These these are what's really going to help guide you on where you're going to be placing some of your steel panels, and this is what's really going to sell the effect on whatever pair of shoes you're working on. So on this pair of shell toes near my back heel, I happen to have these two perpendicular stitch lines, which are a perfect place for me to start. I'm going to place my first piece of tape right along the same path of that stitch line, and we're going to be stretching that from my midsole all the way to my sock liner. And rather than using black for my shading, which would be a bit too harsh here, I'm going to swap that out for dark gray and spray that very softly right along my tape line. Once we peel that back, we can then lay our next strip of tape perpendicular to our first one. A little trick that you can do here if you're looking to spray more lines in a parallel fashion for a cleaner look is just use multiple pieces of tape as your spacers in between those lines. Shading around the various panels of whatever shoe you're working on is also something that will really help bring this effect to life and really make it seem like it was made perfectly for the shoe you're working on. Then I'm also going to hit every single eyelid with this paint and then it's time for a vignette around the entire upper, aiming both at our midsole and near our sock liner. Now we have the task of airbrushing our drop shadow right behind each of our rivets. I like to start in one of the corners near where two of my perpendicular lines meet. Before applying these, I definitely recommend practicing on the tape you have underneath, a scrap piece of paper, whatever the case is, just get familiar with essentially spraying very tiny circles. You can also try lowering the PSI on your compressor if you seem to be having any issues controlling the amount of paint that's coming out here. I'm going to spray these tiny little dots for the drop shadow of our rivets along the opposite side of anywhere I did my shading earlier with the tape. A couple things to keep in mind is you want to try to keep 
keep these dots as equidistant as possible and you always want to have one of these dots perfectly framed within the corner of each panel. Once we've completed those, it's then time to add in our highlights for the steel rivets themselves. I'm going to be using a little bit of gray paint and if you haven't before, this is the perfect time to test out the toothpick method to add all of these tiny little circles within those drop shadows. And of course that trusty toothpick always comes in handy for me anytime I need to do a clean outline such as this right around my shark teeth in black. All right, there you have it guys. So unfortunately mission failed on that whole two minute task, but nonetheless, hopefully we packed a lot of great information into today's video for you guys. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you could go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already, it definitely helps the page continue to grow. Hard to believe, but we are almost at 200K subs. We have something very cool in store for that. Hello friends, it's me, Future Dylan, editing this video right now. It's actually been a little bit since I filmed this. So we did recently cross that 200K threshold. Hard to believe, thank you guys so much for that. But what we're doing is hosting another design contest where you guys come up with the design that you want to see me try to bring to life. Make sure you check out last week's video for all of the details and the prizes we're going to be giving away during this contest. And I just want to say thank you guys one more time for your continued support here on YouTube. It's been four years since we've been posting it on here regularly and never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined ever getting to 200,000 subscribers. So just Thank you guys again so much for your continued support and sticking with us and really helping build out this community that we have here. But now let's go ahead and get back to that stuff that I usually say at the end of the video. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. But other than that guys, I'm Dylan DeJesus and everybody get out there and just create.